Hey everybody, uh, alright so today I'm going to frame in this wall for you and just show you I've got a couple obstacles, uh, I guess one's not an obstacle but I'm gonna be putting in a door right here and then the obstacle is this ductwork coming across overhead here. So I'm gonna show you how to do all that, it's actually way simpler than uh, you might imagine. So let's get after it. All right, so when we're framing in a door, we're going to want to consider not only the width, obviously, of the door, but then just a little bit extra. Uh, that way it allows for the frame and then a little bit extra for shimming so you can get the door properly um, plumb and straight and square. So this right here is an existing door down at the bottom of the stairs here. It's a 32 inch wide door. That's the door slab, but the opening, the rough opening, can see is exactly 34 inches so we got two inches of play and that allows for like I said the frame and then a little bit extra for shimming so on this door over here that we're gonna frame out for today uh, it's gonna be a little larger door it's a 36 inch door um, and that's just because it's going into the unfinished part of our basement that's where our storage is can uh, that way we're able to fit like patio furniture back there in the winter and whatnot. So we're gonna throw a 36 inch door opening right here. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so ideally you'd want one piece of wood going all the way across. This is just a little bit longer than what I have on hand. So I'm gonna make up with this little scrap piece here. Um, while I'm building this whole wall, I'm going to connect those pieces with a couple screws just temporarily and then I'll just cut out where the door opening is later on. So like for this door, I just have that sill running all the way across. Later I'll come with a saw and just cut that out. All right, so to start to get the length that I need for this wall, I really kind of want to plan ahead just a little bit and know where I want this wall to land as well. Um, so for that, I've got my laser shooting a line across where I want that next wall to land and we can see that it's on the 101 mark um, but I'm gonna want to extend that by another three and a half inches for another stud. That way I can put a stud on the end like this and then I can tie this next wall into this wall. So 101 inches plus three and a half I'm at the 104 and a half inch mark so I'll cut this to 104 and a half inches and then so I'll need that for the sill plate along the bottom then I'll need something that length along the top. All right, so now I got my top and my bottom plate cut to length and we can start laying out the stud spacing. So let's start in this corner over here. All right, and just lay out your tape a little ways. And we know that a stud is an inch and a half and I want a double stud on the corner. So I'll make a mark at an inch and a half. And then make another mark at three inches. Alright, so that's our double plate on the side, or on this corner, and we know that we have a 36 inch door, so plus 2 inches, 38 inches, that's our rough opening from this stud to the next stud over here. So, take your tape measure, push it to, so it, until it lines up with the end in this last stud that you marked out, and then come down here. Find that 38 inch mark, which is right here. So that's that stud. And then we're going to want another double stud. So we got 38 inches plus an inch and a half, 39 and a half. That's where our next stud's going to be. So it's important to notice that your stud's going to be on this side and this side over here. So let me take a square to that. Actually, just for uh, illustration purposes, you don't have to mark this out, but you can mark out the other side of that stud. Oh. Alright, so this, these are our two stud locations, right there and right there. And then back at this corner, where we started, we'll put a stud at the end, but then we'll mark out there and there. So those are two stud locations here. 
All right, so then we have 38 inches between this mark and this mark. All right, now that we know where the door is going to be, we got that located. We got double studs on each side of the door opening. Now we can just start laying out our regular 16 on center studs uh, as we typically would. So take the tape measure, hook it on the end again. All right, it's on the end. In the first stud mark you're going to mark out is actually going to be 15 and a quarter. So mark 15 and a quarter. All right, and then mark ahead. So X on that side, that's where your studs are gonna sit. All right, because we're gonna have a stud on the end and then we're gonna come out here. First mark is always 15 and a quarter. Then pick your tape measure up and move the end to that 15 and a quarter mark. All right, so we got the end of the tape measure on the 15 and a quarter mark. That just makes the rest of this dummy proof. So now you can start marking your 16. So we got 16, X ahead, 32, X ahead, 48, X ahead, 64, X ahead, and 80, X ahead. All right, and then this is where our next wall is going to come in, right on the screen line. So imagine this is kind of the end of the wall, so you can trace where that green line comes across and then just put an X on this side because we'll put one stud here. All right, so we'll have a stud here. And then we're going to turn this next stud, so just roughly split that in half and then we'll put a stud here. All right, so those are our stud locations. All right, then I'm gonna take a speed square and just transfer these marks up to this green plate on top here. And now I'm within the door opening here, okay? But yet I still have these two marks here that are marking the 16 on center locations. Uh, I'm not going to transfer these up to the green plate just because I, I'm not going to have a stud from in the door opening, obviously. But I probably will have some smaller studs uh, above the door opening. So I'm just going to extend these marks like that. That'll just help you later on so you don't have to go back and remark out your 16s for above the door. Alright, I just noticed one little mistake that I made. So when I marked out this location right here for this stud, that's going to be there, I put it on the wrong side. Actually it's going to be on this back side, alright? So mark out your stud location on this back side here, and then on the front side for the green treat. So what that means is if I put my, my green plate's going to sit right where it is, right here. I'll have a stud right here. Then when I go to put the top plate on, I'm actually going to take it like this, turn it 180, and it's going to sit on top right here. All right. So if you follow this corner, that's going to be on this back side. And sorry about the added noise, my furnace just kicked in. But anyways, all right. So before we can get the height of the wall that we need. Um, we can see that right where the green plate is located, that's where this wall is going to be. So if we follow that up, we'll see that there's nothing to really tie it into on the top. So what I've done is cut a couple of these spacers and those will screw in. Uh, they'll sit flat like this obviously and then flush with the bottom of the floor joist. So I'll screw those in and that will give me something to mount the top of the wall to. Alright, so here I'm just stacking the two plates on top of one another and then I'm taking a measurement from the top of the stack plates to the bottom of the floor joist and that's going to give me the height of the stud. Same thing for under the HVAC. Alright, so the two studs for the door frame, so the two inside studs, are going to be a little bit shorter than the rest. But I just measured and I need 90 and a quarter inches for one, two, 
and then three studs, and then I can tell that this one's going to land underneath the ductwork, and that was 81 and a quarter. So I'll need one, two, three, four, five of those studs at 81 and a quarter. And then I'll come back for these two inside studs, um, but they should be the same as the rest of these door studs, which I think was 81 and a half. Yeah, 81 and a half. So I got one, two, three at 90 and a quarter, two at 81 and a half, and five at 81 and a quarter, I think. And here I'm just taking a measurement of where I need to cut the top plate in order for it to drop down underneath the ductwork. So now I've got my top and bottom plate all marked out and I've got my studs all cut to length. So now it's just a matter of lining those studs up on the marks and nailing them in place. For this I'm just using a battery operated framing nailer and I'm using two nails in the top and two nails in the bottom. Alright, so I got most of the wall put together. Um, I just cut a piece, so this is where the, the wall drops down for the HVAC coming across. And I just cut this piece to fit right in there. So I'll just have to nail that in from the top and then that way from the side. And then I'll have to cut a piece that stretches from there to there as the header. Once I get that in, then I can do a couple short studs above the door. So this should be 38 plus 3 inches. And it is. So we're at 41 inches. So I'll just cut a piece to 41 inches. All right, so I've got two more marks right here and right here for just the regular 16s that we marked out earlier. And they are seven inches. Actually, I should measure from the end because that's what it's gonna wanna be. So I'm gonna cut them at seven and an eighth. Because I think this has a slight bow to it like that. And actually here, instead of using this little piece, I should have actually cut a piece that kind of spans between the stud spacing, and that would have just provided a little bit more rigidity. But in the end, this worked just fine. And now you can watch me struggle to get this wall in place. It was a somewhat tight fit, but that's kind of what you want. And I just used a hammer to knock it in place until it was lined up perfectly with the laser line. And to attach it to the adjacent wall and then up at the top plate, I just used some 2.5 inch screws. And then to attach the bottom of the wall to the ground, I used a ram set gun. And this is basically a nail and a load. And the nail is fired into the ground by the load when you strike the top of this with a hammer. All 
All right, and all that's left to do is cut out the sill plate within the door opening. So I've got my reciprocating saw right here. I've got the blade on backwards. And then just cut it out. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this. If you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button down below. That just helps me grow my channel and it also lets YouTube know that this was a decent video and maybe it should pass it on to some other people to watch. And while you're down there, consider hitting that subscribe button as well. That way you're notified every time I release a new video. Thanks everybody for watching and until next time, 